last year Nebraska had announced their plans to move forward with a uh, a brand new you know athletic complex uh, to house the football team and uh, uh, a lot of the other sports as well. Um, it's from the video mockup that they showed us last year. Really, really beautiful looking facility. Um, kind of taking over the the uh, outdoor practice fields that Nebraska uses right now. And there's also the outdoor track there, which that will be moved. And uh, just, a, you know, everything's connected to Memorial Stadium. Um, there'll be a whole new – whole new locker rooms and you know the whole nine yards even the media we get our own media room that's dedicated to us and uh you know separate uh interview areas and stuff like that so i mean it's all going to be state of the art and uh you know things have been on hold with with the covid situation and uh, you know they announced that they're still planning on moving forward with this just that there's been some delays so you know, once that finally gets done, um, who knows, in 2024, whatever the schedule is right now, I'm not sure at this point. But, uh, you know, hopefully some of these guys are still around to uh, enjoy that. But, you know, when they announced that last year, they had Wandale Robinson come up and, and talk about that. And he hadn't even played a game here yet when he, he was uh, basically the, the player's spokesperson for it. So, that kind of shows you the kind of trust and uh, the kind of character that uh, a freshman like Wandale Robinson had in his first semester being on campus. So, yeah, overall, that's, that facility is going to be, you know, top-notch, top in the country. And, you know, Nebraska has always been known for having great facilities, but truth is that those facilities are, are ancient in, in today's game. So, uh, you know, to be able to recruit with the big boys, you got to be able to spend that money and have uh, – all those bells and whistles that you see teams like uh, Alabama and LSU, you know, have uh, at their disposal. So, yeah, it'll eventually get here, and uh, it, it'll make Nebraska even that much more of a desirable place, uh, you know, for college athletes to come and uh, enjoy their their college experience. Yeah, I think most of us, if if we love college football and, and take in a lot of content, it at some point have seen some type of documentary, whether it be on the Big Ten Network or ESPN going through one of these facilities, whether it be at Oregon, Alabama, wherever. And uh, just you just wonder where this is going to stop, where this is going to lead to, because uh, once you get to a 10 or 15 year old facility at this point, just to keep up with the arms race, uh, it's going to need some type, type of an upgrade. Uh, but it's, it's uh, astonishing what uh, kind of money is going into these facilities at the same time uh one part of me thinks that the, the players are spoiled because of it but on the other hand they're producing they're producing the revenue that is making it all possible so yeah. there's no question about that yeah you know in uh nebraska a few years back uh, did the same thing with basketball um and opened up a brand new basketball facility that uh for practice wise uh, and, uh, you know, it was when they did that, that was the top, top notch in the country. You had, you had schools like Kansas coming here and critiquing it and taking ideas back for, for doing their, their setup like that. So, yeah, you know, the, the money just, uh, you know, people love their, their sports, you know, they're loyal to their school and, uh, you know, those boosters, thank God for those boosters. They keep a lot of these programs afloat. Yeah, you know, we've made it to Thursday so far, so uh, we're doing better than uh, Ohio State and Michigan are and uh, Indiana as well. So, yeah, um, you know, Minnesota, everybody knows they came into Lincoln last year and, uh, you know, put a beat down on Nebraska. Um, you know, Minnesota, a very physical football team, um, a little bit different looking team than, than they had on the field last year with, uh, you know, graduations and uh, injuries and opting out and COVID issues that they've been dealing with. So um, a little bit different looking Minnesota Gophers team that's coming in here, but uh, it should still be a really good game. Um, you know, you get expect uh, Minnesota to, to grind it out on offense and, uh, you know, pound the ball, pound the rock. That's what they do. Um, 
you know, b- behind a very talented offensive line and uh, the running back, uh, Ibrahim, he, he's a tremendous talent. Um, you know, he's going to carry the ball 30, 30 plus times a game. So Nebraska's got to be ready to stop that running attack and uh, try to make uh, Minnesota beat you through the air, make, you know, make them one dimensional and um, take away that big running game of theirs. So, you know, Big, big, big time game, you know, big time spotlight for Nebraska and time for that defense to step up and shine again, uh, build on that that performance that they had last week uh, at Purdue. Yeah, as Craig mentions here, uh, Minnesota, of course, coming off that 11-2 and breakthrough campaign under P.J. Fleck, uh, top 10 finish, a bowl win against Auburn last year, only lost the two games against Wisconsin and Iowa. Bring back a veteran quarterback in Tanner Morgan, who had one of the better TD to pick ratios in the country. All five offensive linemen came back. Now, it's my understanding that uh, they lost a ton of depth behind those guys, but they did bring back all five starters. Uh, Tyler Johnson is doing some serious work as a wide receiver in the NFL this year as a rookie. He left, but Rashad Bateman came back. He had opted out uh, when uh, the season was initially shut down, but he came back. And he's producing uh, Chris Ottman Bells, an excellent uh, wide receiver as well. And uh, as uh, Greg mentions, Mohamed Ibrahim uh, was a thousand yard back two years ago, and they've had a pretty crowded backfield. They have two of their more uh, prolific rushers uh, leave the program uh, this past off season, and Shannon Brooks and Rodney Smith, who were with the program like forever. <laughs> you know, they had they had injuries and and redshirt seasons, and and they just kind of kept going and going. And if you look at those guys' track record, like it takes us back to like 2014 with both of them. But they finally are out of the program. But uh, Ibrahim is uh, having another big season. I think most of their issues are on on defense uh, in replacing a ton of guys, including one of the best corners in the country. Um, one of the best defensive backs in the country, uh, Antoine Winfield. Uh, but Minnesota comes in having uh, had some recent cancellation issues and taking on Nebraska. And the Huskers, of course, still have some hopes of finishing above 500, 5-4, five and four, if they can get themselves to a bowl game with uh, two wins to finish out the Big Ten slate. 